Hey, today on Our Daily Bread, we're going to be talking about the Mass, the Catholic Mass. We don't talk about that very much, but I thought it might be a nice tie-in to uh, some Mediterranean recipes. We're going to tie it all together somehow. Well, I thought I'd cook for 12 because we usually think of the Last Supper as being like the forerunner of the Mass, of the Mass that Catholics celebrate. Today in the program, we're making falafel, kafti, and we're also going to have some nice couscous with artichokes. So we're going to do some little kind of Mediterranean food, and I've got a real easy recipe that I'm going to start with for uh, falafel. Now, this is a simple recipe. You can make it in a more complicated way. And that's kind of like the way Catholics celebrate the ritual of the Mass. Over the centuries, it's been done very, very simply. And over the centuries, it's been done in a very complex way. But the core of the Mass, that it is the presence of Christ in our midst, under the form of bread and wine, that's the basis for what we do. And even though a lot of things around that have changed and the order and the form, I mean, it's really amazing to me when you think about the very earliest church and how they celebrated what we call the Mass today. But anyway, for the falafel, let's start with that. I'm going to put in 16 ounces of uh, canned, drained garbanzo beans into the food processor. Let's mash that up a little bit. And then we're going to put in about a quarter of a cup or a small onion that I've diced up a little bit and we want to get that well ground as well and and you know uh, panko breadcrumbs have been become so popular for that little crunch that they add so I'm going to put in about a quarter a cup of those let's see what else do I need oh I need a little bit of olive oil a quarter a cup of olive oil let's see and then whoa one egg those are small eggs, maybe we'll need another one later on, we'll see. We got a little bit of parsley, throw that chopped parsley in there. Let's mix this up a little bit. Okay, now let me mash this down a little bit. Now, in the earliest church, you know, again, we use rituals that come from common daily experience. And you know, one of the experiences that we celebrate in the Mass is very simply a meal, a meal. In fact, in the early church, it was not uncommon for Christians to get together. In the, let's call it the primitive Christian church, the very beginnings, where they would get together at one person's house or another person's house, and they would celebrate this kind of agape, this meal, you know? And in this meal, they would remember the presence of Christ. Because what did, God, uh, what did Jesus say in the Gospels? He said, do this in memory of me. When did he say that? At the Last Supper, when he said, take and eat this bread, for this is my body. And as he took a final cup of blessing at that Passover meal, we believe it was a, a Passover meal, he took that final cup of blessing, he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant that will be poured out for you and for all. And then after that, he said, do this in memory of me. So what we're doing at the Mass, most of all, most importantly is, we're remembering the sacrifice and the meal, the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary, and the fact that He wants to be present with us at every time. And that's kind of, in a way, the, the way the first ritualized Mass came up. But it was centuries before it got to be like, uh, like the Mass we kind of know today, although that changed too since the Second Vatican Council. Before that, there was all kinds of other things going on. And 12th, 13th, 14th century, there was a lot of adoration going on. I'm going to talk a little bit about those things, but it's pretty complicated to do in 22 minutes. So let me do the best I can. Now we need something that really speaks of the Mediterranean area, and of course that would be lemon juice. I like to use a little more than required, but it calls for about a tablespoon, whoa, of lemon juice, a little bit of garlic powder. I like a lot of gar garlic powder. About a, a teaspoon or so of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. We're gonna use some, uh, about a teaspoon of black pepper. We got some curry powder here. I love curry, I don't know if you do, but uh, I'm gonna do about, a, uh, about a little more than a teaspoon, I'm gonna say in there. Okay. Let me 
we dump our mixture in here. Oh, that feels like a really good consistency. It's not too wet, it's not too dry, and it just really holds together there. Okay. Now, by the way, you can do these in a little, I like to make little flat patties. You start as like a golf ball, and then you put it in the breadcrumbs, and you flatten it ever so slightly, and then these will go in the oil in a couple of minutes. Now, we'll take our falafels and put them in the hot oil very carefully because you don't want them to splatter and hurt you. And the thing is, you don't want to fuss with these. You don't want to keep turning them over. You just want to let them cook for about two to three minutes on the one side. Hopefully, they'll be beautifully browned, and we will be able to turn them over onto the other side. I think that these are just, oh, I see them getting brown around the edges. Don't those look pretty? Ooh, I'm gonna like these, I know. Okay, so you want the oil hot enough to start, uh, you know, just browning. You gotta cook them all the way through because, you know, you've got some raw egg in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of sea salt, just a touch. That'll, that'll give you those sparkling points of light in your flavor there. And this is something you could make for at least a dozen people. You know, I get one, two, three, four, five. We got six good ones out of um, out of just one recipe there. One can of garbanzo beans. I like I like lemon, so I'm putting some lemon over it, and maybe a little lemon garnish. And there's our falafel. And we'll be back with more, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Catholic Mass right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to our Daily Bread. Today we're doing kind of a Mediterranean menu for uh, maybe a dinner of 12 people, like the Last Supper. And today we made falafel. I'm going to make some kafti. And our last food this afternoon is going to be some couscous with artichokes. So it's, a, I think, it's a really nice, fresh, nice menu. Now, this kafti, uh, kafti, I've never made it before. So it looks like a pretty easy recipe, you know. I'm sure professional cooks on TV, you know, try their recipes out first, but what the heck? We're all friends here, right? And it's pretty, it's kind of almost like a meatloaf, and it's very indigenous to Turkey. So we've got a lot of flavor in this dish, a lot of spices, and I, I really like Mediterranean food and Greek food and food from the area of the Holy Land. I'm gonna chop these uh, onions up into very small pieces. So today in the program too, we're talking about the Mass. And as I said in our last segment, most, most Catholics, if you press them, they would probably say that the Mass began with the Last Supper. But there's a lot more to it than just the Last Supper. <laughs> Supper. You know, culturally, the meal was a very important part of the day of the ancient people. The meal was a time to come together as a family in particular. It would have been a time to show hospitality to strangers and those who might be passing through. One of my favorite things, especially in the summertime around vacation time for people, is when we get a lot of visitors at our church, you know, it's always great to see new people. And you know, when you, when you go, and I go to a, a different church, sometimes we go to different churches as we move around the country, you know, it's nice, you know, it's, it's, it's always a nice experience to see that despite all of our differences, we're still united in this Catholic liturgy that we call the Mass. And I'm gonna put one small onion in here. I'm gonna put about a pound of ground beef in here, about a pound of ground lamb in here. Okay, now my hands are clean, I did wash them. You know, we have a catechism in the Catholic Church. A catechism is a, a book, a written, a, a book of teachings of the uh, little, you know, little and big things of the church, the doctrines, the dogmas, the, uh, the rituals and things, okay? So in the early church, the first catechism we know about is called the Didache, the Didache. And that was from the first couple of centuries of the church, and it was known as the teaching of the apostles. This earliest teaching, they spoke about the mass and what it was, the gathering at the Eucharist of the, of the community, and at this gathering of the Eucharistic community, 
the Christians, the early Christians, they would do certain things. They would have readings, and they would use certain words that the Lord would use. In fact, the very earliest masses of the church, the liturgies, would be done by different priests in, uh, in different homes, and everybody would have kind of their own Eucharistic prayer. It wasn't all the same like it is today. Today around the world, every Sunday, the same readings are read at every Catholic church in the world. Basically, even if you didn't know the local language, you know what's going on at Mass because it's so uniform. But it wasn't always like that. And so Hippolytus, one of the fathers of the church, the ancient church, Hippolytus actually came up with the very first standard Eucharistic prayer, and we still use it today. It's called Eucharistic Prayer Number 2, which happens to be the shortest Eucharistic prayer as well. But always at the center of the Mass is the presence of Christ who never wants to be away from us, so he is with us always, particularly in the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist, and most particularly in the way it's celebrated at our Mass. So in goes the four cloves of garlic. Wait, by the way, I'm putting in a, a fair amount, a, a couple of tablespoons of, of uh, smoked paprika. You can re use regular or smoked. I'm putting in about a, a, a teaspoon or so of cumin. Now the ground cumin, it, 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 you know, it's very, that is one spice that says Mediterranean or Middle Eastern, you know. Uh, a little bit of ground cinnamon, about a, a half a teaspoon or so. You wouldn't think of using uh, cinnamon perhaps in, in a kind of a, uh, a meaty recipe like this, but it's really good. A little bit of allspice and two tablespoons of tomato paste. One, two, I think that's two. I always like to buy these little tubes of tomato paste because you don't have to open up a whole can and waste it, you know? Um, we're gonna chop up some mint. Mint always goes well with lamb. Not mint jelly, but real mint. St. Gregory the Great. You know, we've all heard of the words Gregorian chant. It was under his reign as the Pope that things became more standardized, you know? And so we've gone through this ages and ages, a few hundred years of, of the standardized mass. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I was a kid when uh, a lot of the changes of the Second Vatican Council came into being. The Second Vatican Council was a meeting called by Pope John XXIII of all of the bishops of the world, all of them. And they discussed and discussed and discussed, and they finally agreed on a number of issues about the role of the church in the modern world. And some of what they discussed also had to do with the way we celebrated the Mass. Now, in the mid-1950s, under Pope Pius XII, Pope Pius XII allowed that the Mass would be celebrated in a native language, in a vernacular. And that was done in Africa, actually. So people think, oh, it all changed in the 19th century. Well, no, there was, there was vernacular before that. We went from Latin to the vernacular, and now, wherever you go, you can pretty much hear the Mass in a language that you can understand. Drop some mint in here, quite a bit of mint and about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup of um, breadcrumbs. I'm using seasoned breadcrumbs. An egg, and about a quarter of a cup or so, maybe a little less than that, just to put a little moisture in there with that, that lamb. A little bit of uh, olive oil. There we go, great. And now I'm gonna do what I like to do. This is something the kids love to do, isn't it? Today, when you go to church, in a Catholic church throughout the world, there are mainly two parts of the liturgy, the Mass. The first is called the Liturgy of the Word. And that part is all from Scripture. You know, sometimes Catholics think, think that they don't know the Bible. But if they're listening at all, in three years, a three-year cycle, you'll hear most of the readings from the Bible on uh, Sundays, when you go to Mass Church on Sunday. Now, by the way, okay, so we got these beautiful little patties. I'm going to put them in this like this, I don't want to, I want a little oval. And I'm gonna drop them on a very hot, very hot skillet here, and we're gonna cook these. In the Liturgy of the Word, we hear the readings that give us a lesson for the week. And then the pastor, or the priest, the parish priest, whoever preaches, or the deacon, whoever preaches is supposed to kind of reflect at that very sacred time, reflect after the gospel on how the gospel pertains to our daily lives. And this can be, you know, for me, pretty tricky. And 
Sometimes things will come as an inspiration. Sometimes it takes a real long time, you know? So in that liturgy of the word, we become in touch with Christ who's present at the Mass in three ways, okay? Actually, four ways. He's present in the assembly. Jesus said, wherever two or more gather in my name, I'm there with you. He's present in the priest because the priest steps in to offer the sacrifice of Christ in the person of Christ. He's present in the Word. God is present and His Son Jesus in the Word that we hear, particularly when we share the Gospel. And Christ is present, as Pope Paul VI proclaimed, Christ is present in the most excellent way, par excellence, in the Eucharistic sacrifice, the bread and wine, which contains His real presence. Now, you know, this is hard for some people to accept. But, uh, you know, it's a mystery, okay? Now, that could be a cop-out to some people. But to me, if we can embrace mystery, we're able to enter into the mystery of God more and more. And it means, I think, that we trust in God so much that we thank Him and praise Him and worship Him for the wonderful gift that He gave us, the gift of His own Son. But still, we don't understand it. We don't understand it. That's the nature of a mystery, isn't it? Okay, we've got our kofti going here. Now we're going to make some sauce for our kofti. I'm going to use a little bit of yogurt, plain yogurt, non-flavored yogurt. I'm putting in a little bit of vinegar, white uh, vinegar, to loosen it up a little bit. A little sp splash of lemon juice. A little bit of salt. You know what? I forgot to put salt in the in the beef and the lamb mixture, so don't forget a little bit of salt in the beef and the lamb. I'm supposed to use some, uh, let's see, oh, some pepper. Put a little pepper in. So lemon, pepper. Uh, now fresh dill is really good, but we, we didn't get any today. We forgot about it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I don't have any dill, so I'm using a little bit of juice from dill pickles, you know? Nobody will know the difference. There we go. Let's see how this... And we want to really incorporate everything here so that it's nice and smooth. Oh, I, I put some pita bread, pocket bread, in, the, uh, in a warm pan here. Because it, it's so much nicer to have warm pita bread than cold. I'm going to make them open face, okay? Open face. Looks good to me. <laughs> I hope you like it too. A wonderful Turkish dish that I've just learned about in making meals for a big group, a group of 12 maybe. I'm Father Paul Sile. We'll be right back with more of our daily bread, so please don't go away. Today on Our Daily Bread, we've been talking about the Mass, and we've been making some Mediterranean food. We start with falafel, then I made some kafti, uh, lamb and, and beef that was ground with a lot of good spices and seasonings. And right now, I'm making a little couscous as a side dish that we're going to serve with some tomatoes and feta cheese. It'll be a wonderful, wonderful uh, ending to our meal today. Now, we chose I chose Mediterranean because of uh, we've been talking about the apostles and food for a crowd and things like that. So, while we were on break, I started the couscous. And so right now, in this hot pan, I'm gonna throw in our parsley, simply because I want that in first, so it'll take a little of the raw edge off of the parsley. It's not gonna cook. It'll still be flavorful, but it's going to be not quite so raw tasting, which I prefer it to be like that. Okay, so let's go into our bowl here. Are we ready? There we go. Whoop. Now there's not much more that we have to add to our couscous, except for some nice cheese. Now make sure you get the nice cheese, okay? This is feta cheese. Ah, everybody likes a lot of cheese. Now artichokes are gonna be our final ingredient. So after the Liturgy of the Word, we go into the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and there's a very clear transition here. 
And this is the part in the Mass where the people bring forward the gifts of bread and wine, which are going to be used for the Eucharistic celebration. And just like a family meal, you know, it all kind of comes together at the celebration of the Liturgy of the Eucharist. The people, representing everybody in the church, bring forward the bread and the wine. They offer that to the priest, and he offers it to God as an exchange of gifts. So this bread and wine, fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, will become the body and the blood of Christ. A little pepper here, a little kosher salt, which is a little more uh, finely ground. Okay, whoop, not that, not, not that, not, it's a little bit much, but that's okay, we'll live. Okay. The priest offers the bread and the wine to God and consecrates it, blesses it. It's special. But it's not just because of the priest. No, not at all. The priest is the instrument of God, chosen by the community, ordained by the local bishop, and then set forward to continue this Eucharistic celebration in all places because the Eucharist is really the heart of our Catholic faith. So when the people of God come together each weekend, each Saturday night or Sunday, to celebrate the Mass, the Eucharist, what we're really doing is what families do. When you get together for Thanksgiving or a special holiday, don't you start with a little Liturgy of the Word? Maybe you don't read the Bible, but you tell family stories. Later on, the meal comes. Do you get up and leave before the end of the meal or dessert? No, of course not. You stay. You talk. You listen. You, in your own life, socially, you come together in communion community with one another. When we come to the table of the Eucharist, we come together not only in community with one another, but more significantly in communion with God through Christ His Son. You know, it's a beautiful mystery. It's a wonderful thing. It's something that, you know, a lot of people say, well, why should I go to church? You know, I can see God in nature. Of course you can see God in nature, but you come to church to see your brothers and sisters, you know. You know, wouldn't it be a sad thing if you got to heaven and and uh, Jesus said to you, like, well, it's nice you're here, but where's everybody else? Didn't you bring anybody with you? Part of the way we nourish ourselves and come together as a community of faith is most significant in what is the summit of our worship as Catholics, and that is the Mass. That looks pretty good, huh? That couscous? So I'm going to taste a little of our couscous with tomato, artichoke, parsley, feta cheese. The only thing I think I'd do, I'd probably put a little less salt in. I went a little heavy-handed on the salt, and feta cheese has got a lot of salt. Well, anyway, that's our show for now on our Daily Bread. Thanks for being with us. I look forward to seeing you again next time or wherever I see you. Until then, God bless you all. Ah, everybody likes a lot of cheese. Am I supposed to put garlic in it? No. Right? Anybody? Well, there's garlic out here. That's why I'm asking. What's the matter? The sentence was way too much up and down. <sighs> what do you mean up and down? You're look at the camera. Volume or? Look at the camera. Look at the food. I have to adjust the microphone All right. for your head position. So if we can at least get yeah, well, I, I just don't want to cut my fingers off. <laughs> um, start at a medium shot and then we can pull out because he's. Me? No. No, 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 no. you're good. It's not good. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to get the bug out of there so I don't eat it. Sorry.